we're going to define the concept of factoring something completely. And to do that, we have sort of an implicit order of factoring. For any problem that you have, you may be able to factor several different ways, but there's an implicit order that we use. The first thing you look at for any problem is you factor out the greatest common factor. That's always the first step. If you can't factor out the greatest common factor, then you go to the second step. And this one has different pieces to it. If in looking at or after you factored out the greatest common factor or you couldn't, if you're left with a binomial, which means two terms, you're going to have three possibilities for that. One possibility is difference of squares. And that looks like this, something squared minus something squared. Notice that there would be two terms. That's what I meant by a binomial. It's two terms that you're left with. The other is sum or difference of cubes. So it will either be something cubed plus something cubed, two terms, or you would have something cubed minus something cubed. So if you have two terms, then these are the two possibilities for factoring. They're either difference of squares or sum or difference of cubes. The next part is if it isn't two terms, if it's a trinomial, that is if you're given a problem that has three terms, then you're going to use my tic-tac-toe or my fat. AC method, I called it, right? AC method or tic-tac-toe. So just to go back so you can understand this, with the order of factoring, the first step, no matter what, is you look for the greatest common factor. After that, you look, and if the problem that you're given has just two terms, you notice whether it's difference of squares or some and difference of cubes. If it has three terms, you're going to either do the AC method or what I call the tic-tac-toe. And many of them, most of their problems have three terms in them. The last one is if you have four terms for the problem, then you're going to do factor by grouping. Because with four terms, we paired them. We had two pairs, and then we worked it from there. And this is very important. So these are the, this is how you're going to factor completely. You're going to use this order, and you're going to go through, and very often, after you've done one or two steps, there still is more factoring that you can do, and you proceed, continue doing that with this order. We'll do a few examples so you have a sense of it. We'll go to our first example. So the first example, the wording will say factor completely. And that word completely means that you do not want to be left in your answer with anything that could have been factored further. So as an example, suppose I have you do the problem 10, factor 10y to the fifth minus 17y to the fourth plus 3y to the third. First step is we are going to factor out the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor is our first step. And in this case, we could see that's y cubed. Now remember, when you factor out y cubed, you're really thinking of each of these divided by y cubed. So 10y to the fifth divided by y cubed, 10y squared, negative 17y to the fourth divided by y cubed, negative 17y, 3y cubed divided by y cubed, they cancel, right, plus 3. You've now done the first step. 
Now completely, factoring completely means I have to look, can I go further? So it really is telling you to factor further. And I do have this trinomial, so I'm going to try this with that tic-tac-toe method. For this one, I am going to try this trinomial with the tic-tac-toe. I have 10y squared and positive 3. 10 times 3 is 30. The middle is negative, so I'm going to have a negative times a negative. And I'm going to proceed to get the factors of positive 30 with two negatives that add up to negative 17. I put in the numbers and I methodically go through. I have negative 1 and negative 30, negative 2 and negative 15, and sure enough, that is my negative 17. I now put negative 2y, negative 15y, I work the first row, the common factor, greatest common is 2y, which puts a 5y here and a negative 1 here. 5y into negative 15y, negative 3. I now have this trinomial could have been factored further. So now my actual answer, I have the y cubed, and then I have the two binomials I got here, which were 2y minus 3 and 5y minus 1. This is factored completely. We'll do a few more. An example, another example, suppose I ask you, and the wording will always say completely, which hopefully that word will mean to you factor further. Factor completely x to the fourth minus 1. I go back here and I look at my order of factoring and x to the fourth minus 1 didn't have common factor but it is a binomial. So it's either a difference of squares or a difference of cubes. We'll go back to the problem. This is two terms. Two terms means it's either a difference of squares or a difference of cubes. It can't be cubes because I don't have a multiple of 3 as the exponent. So I have to write it to indicate it's a difference of squares. Because it's difference of squares, I put what gives me x to the fourth when I square it? x squared, 1 is 1. We know for difference of squares that we can put x squared and 1 in each one. This is plus, this is minus. What we are left with is when you have x squared plus 1, that's a sum of two squares. That's not factorable. But here's where the word completely, think of it as factor further. We can factor that further. It is, again, a difference of squares. So we can go one more step. So on the side, x squared minus 1 we can do a rewrite. What's being squared is x and 1. And we can see with the x and the 1, x and the 1, one gets a plus, the other gets a minus. So this can be factored as x plus 1, x minus 1. When we write the answer, we bring down all three factors. So we bring down the x squared plus 1, which you can memorize sum of squares does not factor, and x plus 1, x minus 1. We have factored this completely. The factors of x to the fourth minus 1 are all of these. The first one was here, and then this one got factored further, and that's the result. We'll try another one. Suppose I say factor completely, which you can think of meaning factor further, if um, this, and I ask you to factor 36x to the fourth 
minus 13x squared plus 1. By our order of factoring, this is no, there is no greatest common factor, nothing in common. It's not two terms. It's a trinomial, so that's going to do our tic-tac-toe or factor by grouping. First I put in 36x to the fourth and 1. First step, 36 times 1 is 36. And looking at the coefficient of x squared, we have to find the factors that add up to or sum to negative 13. Both numbers should be negative. We'll now get the values. We know that negative 1 and negative 36, negative 2 and negative 18, negative 3 and negative 12. So sure enough, negative 4 goes into positive 36, negative 9, and we do have the two numbers. That's going to allow us to put in, because the middle term is an x squared, we put in a negative 9x squared and a negative 4x squared. For tic-tac-toe, we factor across. We have a 9x squared, which when it divides in here, we have a 4x squared and a negative 1. And then the missing one here, 4x squared into that, is a negative 1. Working this through, we get that 36x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 1 is the product of 9x squared minus 1 and 4x squared minus 1. We've done a lot of work, but remember the word completely really means factor further. So we have to look at what we have and see if it could be factored any further. When it can factor further, very often it is difference of squares. And sure enough, that's what we have here. I will do a rewrite on the side so that we can factor. 9x squared minus 1. This is a square, not a cube. And 4x squared minus 1. These are difference of squares. For the 9x squared, it's 3x and 1. For the 4x squared, 2x and 1. I can now rewrite this. I'm going to have a binomial here. We'll have the 3x, 1, 3x, and 1. One is plus, the other is minus. Then the same for the 4x squared minus 1. We'll have 2x and 1, 2x and 1. 1 is plus, the other is minus. And when we're finished, we have factored that completely.